Hey everybody, this is Matt from MasterSketchup.com and this is the third video tutorial on how to build a shed in SketchUp. On the first two videos, uh, you should have learned how to create a floor and the walls. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to lay out the rafters. So the first thing you'll need to do is just draw, because it's a 2x4 rafter, you'll just draw a 2x4. And what I'm going to do is just use the rectangle tool and create a floor here. And I'll make sure I put that in a group. And that's just to make it easier to, if I'm drawing stuff out in the middle of nowhere, it, um, it's a lot easier for SketchUp to reference that space. Uh, when you have a plane to to reference to. So I use the rectangle tool and the length doesn't matter here so I'm just gonna define the uh, the width of the 2x4 so inch and a half actually it was comma inch and a half and then I'm using the push-pull tool which is the letter P on the keyboard and I'll pull that up to 3.5 inch and then I'm gonna triple click that right click and make group. We're actually, we'll probably turn that into a component later, but for right now, I'm just going to use uh, a group. You can always change things from groups into components uh, later down the road if you want to. So using the move tool, I'm going to just grab it um, on the edge and I'm going to bring it up to the top of the wall and place it right there. And, you know, right now we're just, we're just kind of rough estimating where you know the the two by four is very long it, we don't that's not going to be the finish length so we're just kind of uh, playing around with it right now and we'll want to rotate the two by four to the angle of the roof that we're going to work with so um, before when you use a I mean you can do things many different ways in SketchUp if you wanted to do to you could use these handles and rotate it and then you just have to move it again uh, once you once you finish rotating it. But if you use the actual rotate tool, you can reference any point because by using the move tool to rotate, it all it always will rotate from the center. So you can see how the thing pops up in the center. But if you use the rotate tool, which is uh, let's see, what's the rotate tool? Q on your keyboard. Um, you can reference any point to rotate it from. So uh, with the 2x4 selected, we want to find the plane. See how it's like jumping around? It goes to the blue and the red and can jump to the green. Once you find the plane that you want to rotate on, you just hold down the shift key and then it locks that, uh, that plane to rotate. And we could come in right here to, uh, you know, let's say right here. We'll click once to start. You can let go of the shift key now. And you want to come out parallel to the uh, 2x4, which is on the green plane in my uh, model. So you click again once you've locked to uh, that parallel plane. And then you just move it up and click again. It'll snap to uh, 45 degrees. And um, I think you can set it up to snap to others. but. Um, what I'm going to do in this case, I'm just going to click anywhere and then type in 35, enter, and it'll it'll move it to 35 degrees. And then we want to create the rafter seat, so uh, we'll select it again, use the move tool, and I'm going to just select uh, a point on the edge and tap the up arrow and bring it down right there. Um, I'm sure there's some formal way of calculating the depth of a rafter seat but I uh, I don't know that method <laughs> so I'm just I'm just guessing. Um, so basically what what I'm doing here in SketchUp is is really building the shed um, digitally and figuring out how everything's gonna fit together as I'm going so I don't really have any dimensions uh, that I'm that I'm stuck to you know so if you if you actually knew what the dimensions were of this rectangle you could use the the guide tool the tape measure tool and lay out you know your dimensions and and make make all the cuts from there so now we'll go ahead and make that cut out 
in the 2x4, so we'll go to the Select tool, and then remember this is a group, so when we double click it, we're now entering that group. And I want you to notice something here, this is really important, um, and this is why we turned this into a group um, as soon as we built the 2x4. Notice how the axis is uh, you know, parallel or perpendicular to the, the way we rotated the 2x4. So what happens is every time you create a group, it inherits its own set of axes. So when we get out of this group, you know, we, we come back to the main axis here. But when we, when we go into this group, um, this is the axis. So by grouping that first before we rotated it, um, that allowed us to uh, rotate the axis as well. Now, if you ever get screwed up, you can always use the axis tool to realign your axis. Uh, but we won't get into that right now. So with the 2x4 group open, we're going to just take the line tool, which is L, and see how we can, we can see the outline of the wall, um, even though it's not in this group. And we're going to just follow those points, and SketchUp will snap to uh, intersections and points. Sometimes you might have to orbit around to get that. And then um, what I would suggest you do, I have, I have a shortcut key set up which um, hides the rest of the model. So I think, let's see, where is it? In Component Edit. So if you go to View, Component Edit, Hide the Rest of the Model. I have a shortcut key set up where I can just press X. And uh, if you want to learn how to set up sh uh, keyboard shortcuts, um, I'll put a link in the video description on uh, how to do that. I have an article that shows you how to do that. So we'll hide the rest of the model just to make it easier to uh, to work with and use the push-pull tool and you'll just push-pull it back and you can see it, it deleted that little notch. And we can press X again to bring everything back and then click outside the group to close it. So right there we have our rafter seat. And then we, the next thing we'll do is figure out, you know, where this needs to be cut. So all I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just copy this for now. So I'll select it, use the move tool, press control. I'm just going to bring it over here and I need to rotate it. So we can't, we can't use the, um, the flip along axis because it actually will reference the groups axis so I just flipped it and you can see it flipped along the groups axis the internal axis so that's not what we want and we don't want to rotate it this way like this so with the group selected we'll just go to the rotate tool which is Q and we'll lock onto the blue axis and you can just you don't have to you know line things up perfectly we can do it in two steps so I rotate it to where I want it to be, and then I'm just going to move it. I'm just going to do a rough move over here, and then come in and grab the, the actual point and bring it in. So remember, you can always do things in multiple steps. Um, it, it just makes it easier. Instead of trying to reference, if you can't get a, a, a good proper reference all the time, don't be afraid to, to do things in two steps. And so now, if we look at the shed, we have a, a ridge board that we need to place in there as well. So we'll go back over to the model that we're building, and I'm going to just create a, a ridge. So, comma, 1.5, and push-pull up. I think seven and a half or seven and a quarter. I can't remember. And I'll triple click that, make that into a group, grab the move tool, which is the letter M. And I'm going to reference the midpoint here because I want to go right up to the center. So I'll click to start that move, I'll zoom out, and then come right in here to where these two are intersected. And then I need to move it down 
So I'll reference that corner and I'll tap up on my keyboard to lock the blue axis and then I'll come right here until it snaps to that line. And then now all we have to do is double click this rafter and grab the line tool reference that you can hide the rest of the model you don't have to hide the rest of the model it's just uh, I guess it's a habit I've gotten into because when you start working with really complex stuff um, it you tend to use that a lot alright and then this rafter we can just delete because we're actually gonna make this roof section here a component and then just copy it over to the other side so I can just get rid of that that rafter so at this point what I'll do is I'm gonna turn this into a component because I'm gonna make uh, copies of it so you can come right in here and uh, and rename it I know it's off the screen a little bit but we'll call this uh, the rafter And then what I'll do is make a copy of this rafter. So I selected that corner. I'll hit Control to copy. And I want to stay on the red axis. So I'll hit the right arrow key. So that locks it to the red axis. And instead of measuring the, uh, the distance, I'm actually just going to reference this point right here because I want I want the the rafters to be in line with the uh, two by fours. So, um, you know, just remember you don't you don't have to reference the point that you started. You know, if you click to start here, you don't have to reference that same point. You can lock to an axis and drag along anywhere. And then, so I'll make another copy. Same thing, lock on the red axis, and reference that point. And then uh, five times. So five multiplication sign. And then I'll just adjust this last one here to go in. And we want to make this into a component as well. So roof. I need to name it something else because I already have that roof one. So now we have this roof component created and we can copy it around to the other side as well. In the next video we'll finish up the rafter tails and figure out where the how to build the soffit uh, detail. And make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel You'll get updates every time I upload a new video so you always stay on top of my new tutorials.